I believe in the education. I believe in learning. And if you're new to investing in early stage companies, I do not want somebody coming in and putting 50K into two deals and then being done. Like I want them investing a couple thousand dollars or a thousand dollars into many good deals. Uh, hi, Mike. Thanks for coming on Sunny Bitcoin. Yeah, thanks for having me. Mike, so tell us a little bit about your background and your journey in starting Lightning Ventures. I think it's a fund focused on Bitcoin-only startups. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm a late 2012 Bitcoiner myself. Uh, that 2013 era was a lot of fun. You had the, uh, the Mt. Gox, you had the Silk Road, uh, you had a lot of the first altcoin boom, uh, and that felt like a lot. But compared to what we're going through right now, uh, with Three Arrows Capital and, you know, BlockFi and the systemic damage that's going on there. Uh, it makes Mt. Gox look like nothing. Uh, and that was such a big deal at the time. So I'm from that school and, uh, you know, uh, had a, I had a bar in Manhattan that had uh, the second Bitcoin ATM in New York City. That was a lot of fun. And uh, just been an enthusiast for, for a long time. I worked with uh, someone who's a maximalist to uh, the hardcore degree, Tone Vase. Uh, we have a conference in Las Vegas called Unconfiscatable that we do uh, once a year. That's a Bitcoin only type of conference. And, um, and I've been angel investing since like maybe 2015 or so. And those were in um, later stage secondaries, you know, like uh, the Lyfts and Ubers and Spotify, DraftKings, those type of things, right? But not really doing the early stage stuff. And then I met someone who said, you really got to get going with the early stage if you if you want to do this. And I started reading as much as I could and learning about early stage investing. And I started investing and I've invested in over 2000 deals, uh, which is kind of insane. Um, and a lot of those were Bitcoin companies, but those were all kinds of companies. You know, those are gas stations in outer space and, you know, uh, and, and vegan uh, ice creams and all sorts of weird things. Uh, so the focus was then where can we really help, right? What can I do? Because I can't really do anything for, um, you know, a biotech company. Uh, there's not really much value I can add, but I can probably in the Bitcoin space. So we started Lightning Ventures uh, with two purposes. One, to have a fund, uh, which we raised for our friends and family. Uh, it's a very small, no fee, no carry fund. And then we have a syndicate where we can offer deal by deal investments to a group of people. Uh, we always have very low minimums because that's what it's about. It's about learning, learning with small amounts, right? Because the amounts can always go up in the future. So we vet these Deals. We secure allocations. Sometimes we invest through our fund. Sometimes we don't. Um, but then we present them to our group. And our group is filled with accomplished people, uh, attorneys, um, iOS developers, uh, you know, maybe former Bitcoin and current Bitcoin founders. Maybe they're running companies. They invest a little on the side. Uh, it's also great for networking and their partnerships as well. And um, and we present that to the group. And when we leverage the power of the group, if you're in Lightning Ventures and you invest in a deal, when the founder sends out their update of here's what's working, here's what isn't, and here's what we need, we're going to take that here's what we need and we're going to send it to the group and we're going to really try and find uh, how we can help, right? So if you're in our group and you invested in that deal and you're an attorney, then you might um, you might want to help that company. Um, you might be able to sit on a phone call with them. Maybe they turn into a client. Maybe they don't turn into a client. Maybe you just help them for 30 minutes and that's just something that you do for them. Uh, we have all, all kinds of stuff that, that happens. But we have a great network of people and we're always looking for more amazing people who want to support charismatic founders and amazing teams and everything that we're doing so that's a nutshell on us so the first fund that you launched which you said was you know like a small fund for friends and family it's called node fund one focused on investing lightning uh network companies right 
So it's not specifically a lightning fund. It's really a Bitcoin fund. Um, there are opportunities that are outside of lightning or maybe not really lightning focused that we didn't want to uh, miss out on. So um, just a little little inside baseball in case people don't know, when you have a fund with a thesis, uh, however narrow that is, you're not allowed to deter from that at all. So, uh, you know, just because I'm the GP or managing uh, person for this Lightning Ventures Fund, if I wanted to invest in some sort of new coffee startup that had nothing to do with Bitcoin, um, I would actually not be allowed to do that. So AngelList is my kind of default compliance who checks me. I wouldn't even be allowed to do that. So if we said specifically that we're investing only in lightning companies, that might still be a great fund. That might be something that we could do. Let's say that there was something that was maybe in the mining space. All right. Or maybe something that's doing uh, Bitcoin backed mortgages. Right. Um, and that's not specifically a lightning focus. We couldn't invest in those things. So we put the thesis on, let's invest in Bitcoin companies. And the emphasis is on lightning because we think that that's where it's going. And that's where a lot of the excitement is. But it's not specifically for lightning companies. And if you don't mind me telling, how is the fund doing? The first one? Uh, well, it's pretty early. Um, we're nearly 50% deployed. So we actually just raised it uh, about a year ago. Um, about 11 months ago is when we closed or, or maybe it's when we started. I can't remember. Around the August 18th area is when we started raising. No, so, um, so we've been deploying, but this is a very small fund uh, and it, it, we're using a micro bet thesis, right? This is the thesis that I use in my own personal investing and that's what we're doing with the Node 1 fund, which is small investments into a lot of high quality Bitcoin companies. And then we're going to hit the winners, the leaders after they emerge, all right, and break out, then you hit them with more significant follow on investing. Right. But we're, we have we have a pretty good portfolio of 16 or so companies so far um, that we've, you know, kind of just seeded along the way. Uh, and then the back half of that fund, uh, once they kind of break out, you know, and they hit that that moment uh, where maybe they go from a 10 million to 100 million dollar valuation. And now they've got some tier one VCs and all the excitement. That's really when you can come in and and hit them a little bit harder. And so that was the first fund, and now you have a syndicate on uh, AngelList, uh, which is focused on investing in Bitcoin startups. Um, so that's that's open, right? Investors can join that syndicate on AngelList and join Lightning Ventures over there, right? Yeah, it's free to join syndicates. And when I started angel investing personally, um, that's the best way to learn is to get into as many high quality syndicates as you can. Luckily, I had a good mentor who tipped me off to a lot of the best people out there. The people like Zach Koalis and Tom Williams, you know, people like uh, Sajid from MyAsia VC, Peter Livingston, okay, uh, Zachary Ginsburg, um, you know, Saks Capital, uh, Shrug Capital. I mean, gosh, you know, they all have syndicates and they all are extremely high quality. These are the best people in the world, in my opinion, uh, that do this. So when someone like uh, uh, Zach Koalis sends you a deal um, and he's putting in a million four of his own money or his funds money and you have the opportunity to co-invest for a thousand dollars. Uh, and then take that ride with him, get all the company updates, read, be impactful if you can, support the company and just learn their process. I sat in these other syndicates for a long time uh, and just read as much as I could. And, you know, you can also go on the thesis. Well, if these guys that are proven winners, you know, Jude, Jude Gomilla, uh, a lot of these type of people, if they're putting in a hundred, two hundred, five hundred thousand dollars of their own money, um, they have that level of conviction as well. So um, that's what a lot of people can do to get started. You can get in some great syndicates. Ours, you're not going to get that other stuff. You're not going to get the longevity pills for your dog uh, and all of these kind of out there ideas. You're just going to get Bitcoin startups 
um, and Bitcoin companies stage agnostic, but usually pretty early stage. So people join um, because they're specifically looking for those type of investments. Yeah, and I was really surprised, actually, and this is really interesting for the audience. Uh, the thing that you call micro investments, when I joined the syndicate and I saw that uh, the minimum amount that I could invest was $1,000. I was not, uh, I was pleasantly surprised. And that's really interesting for the audience that you can really join the syndicate and invest as low as $1,000 in these companies. And like you said, get all the updates, be an investor, uh, know what's happening in the space. Uh, and I think I've, uh, that's really interesting. And I didn't know that. Well, a lot of times, uh, whether you're and someone invests a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, they can bring an equal amount of the same value. Sometimes, someone that invests a larger amount, they can't do anything for that company. And sometimes, somebody who invests a thousand dollars might be a really talented app developer uh, who can help that company um, plot out what they're doing. So, um, it's not really about the money. Um, for me personally, it's like a philosophy because I really hate syndicates where the syndicate lead, which you get to see on the deal, how much we're investing and then how much the minimum is. So a lot of times you see a deal, the syndicate leads investing a thousand dollars and the minimum is twenty five thousand. Uh, that just doesn't sit right with me that I have to invest twenty five thousand. But the person running the deal is investing a thousand um, and all those syndicates that I mentioned. Uh, earlier, those people that I respect so much, their minimums are always a thousand dollars. Okay, so if the best people in the world's minimum are a thousand, um, you know, I, I always want to do the same. Plus, I believe in the education. I believe in learning. And if you're new to investing in early stage companies, I do not want somebody coming in and putting fifty k into two deals and then being done. Like I want them investing a couple thousand dollars or a thousand dollars into many good deals and then watching because there's always opportunities to invest again. When you invest in something at a 10, 12, you know, $15 million cap, six months later, it's coming back. It might be 25. It might be 30. It might be the same. I mean, you got to kind of watch. You have to just observe these things for a while so you get comfortable with it, you know, so that's important. Now, just a little bit more inside baseball on how it works. You get 249 slots. Okay. You get 249 investor slots that you can fill. So sometimes if you have a really large allocation of say a million dollars, um, that thousand dollar minimum, you might hit that cap of 249 investors. So sometimes with a really large allocation, sometimes that minimum will start higher just so they can make sure they can fit everyone in there. But we never really have that problem. Um, so you shouldn't have any of that from us. And so this is a syndicate which is called Lightning Ventures. And what again is the focus? What kind of startups uh, do you invest in? So just Bitcoin companies, right, with an emphasis on uh, Lightning. I mean, companies like, okay, so, I mean, I could just run through maybe a few that we've invested in, um, like uh, Swan Bitcoin, right? Beloved Swan Bitcoin. Everyone knows and loves them. Uh, you know, Corey's that very outspoken. That was the last episode uh, that I did with Corey. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, Swan Bitcoin is a great company, right? That's a, a good syndicate uh, deal that we participated in. Something like um, Thunder Games. Uh, in the gaming space, play to earn uh, Bitcoin, uh, something like a mobile phone wallet like Breeze, Breeze Technologies. They're getting into a lot of other things, too, but everyone knows them right now for their their mobile product. Something like um, Coin Homes, which is under uh, something called Better Future Technologies. They're they're doing um, they're doing mortgages backed with Bitcoin. Very cool product. Um, something like Bold, which is launching a, a Bitcoin backed credit card. Uh, that you can spend and draw on, um, you know, things like uh, other dollar cost averaging type of ex it's not an exchange, but that type of stuff. And, you know, the exchange world extremely well. Things like Relay, the Relay app in um, in Europe, they're in 40 countries. It's a non KYC uh, uh, way to buy Bitcoin. Um, and they're they've, they're selling a lot of Bitcoin. Uh, something like satsback.com, we just wrapped up. We just wrapped up a, a week or so ago. That's a browser extension born in Europe, similar to Lolly, where you can earn Satsback from all your purchases online. 
uh, thing, things like that. So there, people always wonder like, well, what types of Bitcoin companies are there out there? And there's, there's a ton. There's a company like Azteco, which is doing a global worldwide merchant voucher system selling Bitcoin backed, uh, basically gift gift cards they're operating in that same space mobile uh globally where you can walk up to your corner store and buy 25 dollars and just top up on your phone with a lightning voucher or on chain um, so there's a lot of exciting companies um in the world out there right now uh, there's there's just there's there's too many it's not just it's not just a hardware wallet or a phone wallet or in exchange, you know, those are still out there, but there's a lot more interesting use cases. There's a lot of deals floating around. They're not our companies, but things like Stacker News, you know, they're they're out there right now. Things like ZapRite, we're running a deal for them right now. It's accounting software for the uh, small, medium businesses and gig economy. They're going to get into ticketing and all sorts of other things. Um, so there's a lot of different stuff out there. Yeah, and a lot of stuff, even in just the Bitcoin space and the not necessarily the broader, you know, shitcoin space. So that's great. How many companies has the syndicate invested in so far? So I think it's about I think it's about the same. I think we're in that um, 13 to 16 area for both ways. So the way it works is this, right? So if we get an allocation in something where the syndicate, there's no extra, right? Like... Um, like Sunny Bitcoin is going to raise around. All right. Sunny Bitcoin's raising around and you say, Muzz, we'd love to have you. And we do our due diligence and we're like, yeah, we're going to invest through the node one fund. And you say, you know what? I have no room. Uh, we can't offer anything to the syndicate. And then we make a small investment through our fund and that's it. It stops there. Um, so that does happen sometimes. But oftentimes you have a little bit of room. And then you would say to us, you would give us another 100,000 or so and say, why don't you see if you can fill that with your network and we get everyone on board. And then, you know, it's a dynamic process. That number can go up, it can go down. Uh, we just try and, and fill somewhere in there based on what, what the founder is looking for. Sometimes we'll just run a deal through the syndicate and we won't invest through our fund. Sometimes there's bad timing. Sometimes we don't have dry powder. We're in between capital calls. There's many reasons why the fund wouldn't be able to invest in a deal and it would only be in the syndicate. That's why it's kind of cool to be in, you know, in the syndicate and it, and it doesn't cost anything. Right. So even if you invested in our fund or you're invested in other funds, but you still want to participate a little bit on an individual basis, you have the option to do so. Got it. So that's great. You have the fund, which is the node one fund, uh, which is closed for investors, which is still investing in companies. And then there's the syndicate, which, you know, individuals can invest uh, uh, on a deal to deal basis. Um, got it. Any um, favorite startups that you've already invested in? I know you mentioned quite a few. Uh, any personal favorites? Oh, man. Um, so personal favorites. Oh, man, that's so hard because, you know, you love them all like children. Just things that come to mind because they're a little fresh right now. Um, there's this really cool company called Scarce City. And the uh, they sell, uh, they sell, it's an auction house. Think of it as an auction house. And they also sell uh, fine Bitcoin goods, right, is how they put it. But you might get old cassatious coins, um, you know, physical artwork, really cool stuff, collectibles, NFTs, rare Pepe's, but it's all Bitcoin. In fact, their entire uh, treasury and all the money that they've ever received as a company has only been through Bitcoin. Uh, so they just they, we had the NFT NYC thing here uh, a week or so ago and they had uh, a pop up gallery in Tribeca. And I love those guys. I've been hanging out with them for a while now, and I, I love their business model. I love the Sotheby's for Bitcoin uh, type of deal. And just when you go to their auction, you know, the end of the auction and all the people and they're doing live in-person bidding, plus everyone's bidding on the Internet, you know, as these auctions are ending and they're going through these items. Right. And whether it's like these rare Pepe, uh, you know, uh, NFT cards which they sold one that was, I think, went for five, five Bitcoin or so uh, at the time. Uh, and that was down 
from what it went for, um, in, you know, a year ago, it went for a lot more. But I mean, that's serious money. I mean, they've had things that sell for just serious money and cool artwork and really unique, fun stuff in their business. Like their inventory is always changing because it's just it's whatever it is that people are having in the show. So maybe you go to like uh, Bitcoin uh, 22 and they had a big setup there. They ran a bunch of auctions. They had a bunch of art. A lot of that art was 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 put on by Scare City. But, um, you know, I, I mean, not favorites, but just things that I, I just like. It's different. You know, people think Bitcoin companies, oh, oh, you must be mining and maybe a phone wallet. They don't really think about like selling really cool art in a fun way in an auction house kind of deal, you know. So that's, that's just one amazing. company that comes to mind. Yeah, definitely need to check it out. Uh, is there any specific reason that a startup, that a Bitcoin startup would come to, uh, you know, Lightning Ventures versus, I don't know, other popular, older or bigger funds? Um, yeah, well, the first thing that uh, happens with a Bitcoin startup is they don't have to explain to us what Bitcoin is. Uh, and that 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 helps because uh, these founders, you know, they're raising one hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars. They're trying to close checks. The first thing they're doing with a lot of the normie VCs is explaining what Bitcoin is and why they should be investing in it and why Bitcoin is going to win. We skip that whole conversation when someone comes to us. We know why Bitcoin is going to win and we certainly know what Bitcoin is. So um, definitely founders appreciate that. Uh, and they also like the fact that that's really all that we do. Um, I, I'm like a connector. I can't help but try and connect. So, you know, we're helping uh, this really cool company called Pay With Moon uh, or Moon. And they make uh, they have debit cards, KYC free debit cards that you load with Bitcoin and Lightning through a browser extension or through their wallet. Right. But they're white labeling that to every other type of company. If you're a phone wallet operator, you can just use their API and just start issuing uh, debit cards right in in the wallet and then split the interchange with um, Moon. And it's like a really scalable, amazing business, right? So I can't help but help, you know, try to make introductions between every other portfolio company that we have and them, right? I'm constantly sending emails between uh, our portfolio companies trying to get together on this. Uh, do you guys want to hop on a call? Like this seems like a great partnership. So even though a lot of them are kind of competing in, indirectly or, or playing in the same space, they're not really cutting each other's throats. Um, if you're selling gift cards and you're selling gift cards and you're focused on lightning and you're taking uh, dollars, um, there's there's a lot of room to partnership. And I've been able to facilitate some really good partnerships between these companies. So I think that would be one of the main pluses as to why somebody would uh, come to Lightning Ventures. And how many investors have joined the syndicate and what's the kind of profile of these investors? Yeah, so um, it's not as many as you think, um, but we're really trying to focus on quality. Um, and honestly, I want to do calls with everyone who invests and get to know everyone more and have... Um, a, a better relationship, right? Whether they want to be a deal partner and refer founders and people to us and be brought more into deals, right? Which we have a program for people who want to refer deals to us and, and to take care of them, or just to know more about their skills and what they do. So we have a little bit of a longer form that they can fill out that kind of lets us know their superpower uh, and what they're really good at. Um, but, uh, you know, less than a, we have less than a thousand, um, less than a thousand. And we're going to hopefully go through that list. And if we discover some lurkers uh, that are, you know, shit coiners in disguise, um, we may remove those people. So that's something that we're working on, too, is, you know, we we it's OK to be in our syndicate and be a Bitcoiner and learn and observe and not invest. It's not about like you have to invest. Um, but we definitely want to know who you are. I mean, we want to know that you're a real person. So uh, we're doing our best to uh, to kind of scrub that list and make sure that everyone there is supposed to be there. 
I love the fact that shitcoiners are not allowed uh, in the fund. I just, <laughs> just love that. Uh, you, in, you, you inform what the minimum size is. Uh, what's the carry and any other important terms and conditions which an investor should know? Yeah. So, um, well, uh, what is an SPV? An SPV is a place where you can tie up a bunch of individual smaller check uh, investors into one line item on a cap table. Uh, for a company. So if Sonny Bitcoin is raising his pre-seed round right now, um, you might not want 35 different line items on your cap table of $5,000 to $25,000. You might want to put them all together into one group uh, and have them as one line item. So that's one of the benefits to running an SPV. uh, And you also get all of those people Right. Because they may be able to help and, you know, in various ways uh, on the cap table. So one of the things that you're giving up when you do that is you're kind of trusting the person running the SPV or the syndicate lead, which would be us to make any decisions or voting rights or whatever that is. Now, let's say that we invest in a company at a $10 million valuation. okay, and all of a sudden that company is worth a billion dollars. Okay. We have the option to sell a portion of that on maybe a secondary market and distribute the money back to everyone in the SPV. We could sell half of our shares in that company and distribute all the money back to everyone in the SPV. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, is it's not really everyone else's decision on whether we do that or not. It's it's kind of my decision. okay? and that sucks uh, as a person who's in 2000 syndicates. I can tell you a lot of times you have a big markup, right? This thing's up 125 X and the syndicate lead decides, you know what? We're selling half and here's your money. And you can send them a nasty email and say, I didn't want to. But that's kind of how it works. It's not an individual process. okay? Um, so that's one thing that you're giving up there. But a lot of times, uh, you know, there's been a lot of famous uh, exits written about publicly where, you know, somebody sold a tenth of their shares and gave everyone back 5x their money. And you still had 90 percent of that stock rolling. Um, and a lot of times what, they'll, what someone will do is they'll send out kind of a poll or a Google form or a feeler to everyone in that deal and say, hey, guys, we're sitting on a really big markup here. Um, and I'm kind of gauging the temperature on everyone. How would we feel about selling them for this value or selling half? And, you know, you kind of get a feel for what everyone wants to do. But ultimately, it's a syndicate leads decision. So that's one thing that you need to know of. Um, it's also completely illiquid. Uh, once you click that button and your money is in, you are locked up. Um, this is not something that you can sell. And uh, that, might be a, that might be a feature and not a bug depending on your investment uh, profile and style. I know for me, that's a feature. The fact that I can't sell this stuff is good because uh, like you, you're trading charts or whatever. You're logging in, you're looking, it's down today. Do I buy more? Do I sell half? Do I... I don't like to think about that. Once you're in, you're in. So that is something to think about. It's completely a liquid. And there are some fees. There's setup fees. There's, um, there's setup fees to run the deal, which are just actually went up. Unfortunately, you'd think that they would go down, but AngelList decided to start passing off something called blue sky fees uh, to the syndicate themselves. And AngelList used to cover this uh, in their $8,000 setup fee. And blue sky fees can be really expensive depending on what state you live in. Each state in America has a different blue sky registration fee. Some are zero and some are very expensive. So, um, but let's just say, let's just that aside. Uh, basically, the setup fees are, or were uh, $8,000 uh, to run a deal. Sometimes those are a little bit less if our fund is investing. If our fund is investing in a deal, we, we were able to offer the deal for a lower setup fee uh, through AngelList, but roughly $8,000. So if a syndicate raised $100,000 and you invested $10,000, okay, you then effectively have 10% of that syndicate, you then would effectively pay a pro rata pro rated amount of 10% of the overall fees, right? So of that 8,000, 
uh, your fee would be 800. That would be what you'd be responsible of. So that's kind of split between all investors. So there are a few fees there. And then there is a carried interest um, on, on our syndicate. Um, and some parts of the world, they call it a success fee, success rate. Uh, but that's a standard 20% of everything that is invested, uh, that is returned uh, back to the investors. And that is how we hope to one day make money. Super. And how can one join the syndicate as an investor? Um, well, you can go to ltng.ventures and you can click on that button there to join the syndicate. You can also fill out some other stuff there. You could re refer us companies. You, you could join there. But the first thing that you would have to do is you would have to get cleared on the AngelList platform. Uh, that can take two days or so. Uh, the SEC, you know, they're a funny group. Uh, they have this process of self-certification. Uh, I think it's like that by design. So you're basically clicking the button and certifying yourself as an accredited uh, individual. There's no documentation there uh, needed in this situation to do that. The SEC is very funny about that. So um, you self-certify uh, and AngelList also has a couple of bullet points that they would like to see before your account is approved. They would like to see that you've invested in at least one startup. If you haven't, they would like to see that you are or were a founder or were working with a startup or, um, you know, maybe there's one or other two. We've never had someone not get approved uh, for that, but that's the first step, right? Uh, and you can put those investments in, in any name you want. You can put them in your own name personally. You can put them in an LLC. You can tie them into your retirement account or if you have a checkbook IRA kind of deal, uh, you can invest through that. You could do a partnership with companies like Alto IRA. Fantastic. If you wanted to take an old 401k out of the S&P 500, link it to your AngelList account and then start investing small checks into our deals. That's why a lot of people, they think they don't have money. I don't have money to invest in these type of companies. They got an old 401k sitting there with 50 or 100,000 in it, you know, that doesn't really thrill them. Why not start, you know, tie that in and start investing, you know, small amounts in, into our deals. I mean, it's just gonna be huge gains uh, if everything works out the way that it's supposed to work out in the future. So we'll see. And well, every, everything works out in the future today. Bitcoin is around, uh, I think it just dropped below $19,000. We're recording this Saturday night for me, Saturday morning for Mike. Um, I think it's been one of the worst performing quarters in Bitcoin's history. Uh, any comments on the current Bitcoin price? Do you think we've bottomed? Well, if you've been in Bitcoin for a while, this is nothing new, right? I mean, we've been through this a few times now. Um, and personally, I don't get affected by the Bitcoin price dropping uh, or even rising for that matter. You know, whether you wake up and it's 18,000 or you wake up and it's 180,000, uh, you just need to be happy either way. You need to be happy when it's low so you can continue to accumulate more. Uh, and you need to be happy when it's high because you already have accumulated quite a bit and you can celebrate it. So I really don't care. I get scared. I get I get affected when major indexes like the Nasdaq is losing over five percent multiple days uh, in recent in recent time. That affects me because then we're going to have major problems. The Bitcoin price getting smacked around. That doesn't really bother me. Um, I mean, I'm going into a pretty good accumulation phase myself personally. I think over these next 18 months, uh, I'm just going to do what I can to stack little bits. I mean, I've been buying Bitcoin and been in Bitcoin for, for a while. OK, but, you know, you turn on Swan, you get your credit card rewards for everything that you spend. You know, you have your wife turn on her Swan account or whatever. You maybe crank it up a little bit. You buy a little bit through, you know, Cash App or whatever here and there. And, um, you know, maybe if you're accepting goods and services or if you're doing consulting calls or whatever you're doing, maybe you try and accept Bitcoin, especially when it's low. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely going into a major accumulation mode. Uh, for the next 18 months. And honestly, I mean, I hope it drops to 12,000. I hope we get that. I hope we get that $12,000 sell a kidney level. Uh, and, you know, then you're going to, people are going to start busting out the, the credit cards and everything else. But, 
But look at what's going on right now. I mean, Three Arrows Capital, BlockFi, Celsius, uh, which I'm an investor in BlockFi. Um, you know, I was counting on a real big exit there. I mean, that, that was a big shock. I mean, I was in fairly early, like $400 million valuation and that was late. And then, all, then all of a sudden block is worth 5.2 billion. And, you know, you're kind of counting your exits thinking, wow, I'm sitting on a pretty nice markup there when that comes. And we were in a real robust IPO market. IPOs just kept hitting and it was like, wow, block like that, that's, um, that's in the waiting room, right? For a nice IPO. And look what happened. I mean, it just, just crumbled. So, you know, Celsius, no withdrawals. Voyager, no withdrawals. Some of these other ones, they like paused it for a minute. They're lowering amounts, the HODL, HODL knot or whatever it's called. Uh, and some of these other fin blocks playing around with, oh, now you can only withdraw $3,000 a day. You used to be able to withdraw half a million. Um, I really look forward to a point where someone can come in and do Bitcoin lending right. Um, this is such a great business model. It's just, I don't know how they're all failing. Even Unchained, beloved Unchained Capital, sent out an email the other day. They weren't starting any new loans and it was taking two weeks or so to close loans. Uh, you know, and they're all multi-sig, you know, no, no rehypothecation. They're supposed yes. to be the safest ones out there. And they probably are safe, right? But yeah. the, there's nobody's able to really do this right. And I think until that's solved, we just got more pain to go. Yeah, this has been, I mean, in spite of being in Bitcoin again since a long time, this has been an equally painful phase as in the past. You know, you kind of thought that this time this pain would not be there with the, you know, institutional investors coming into Bitcoin. But this has been a painful month. I definitely do not hope that Bitcoin drops to $12,000. I'm not in accumulation mode like you are. <laughs> so I'm not hoping for that at all. I, I kind of feel like the community has learned its lesson and please bottom out and, uh, you know, go for the bounce from here. But who knows? Well, and it's not just, it's not even just that. We forgot about the the Terra Luna, you know, the Doquan, the I mean, there was more that even preceded this. Um, you know, I, I'm with you. You know, I don't want it to drop, but I wouldn't be upset if it did either way. You know, it doesn't it doesn't upset me. Sure. And you're a speaker at the Bitcoin only event, uh, the Baltic Honey Badger 2022. Uh, have you been to the event before? I've it's, it's really on my bucket list. And anything specific you're excited about uh, in that event? So we got a lot of cool travel coming up. It's nice coming out of COVID or getting back to more normal world because those Bitcoin events are coming back up uh, in August. You know, BitBlock Boom uh, is a great conference here in the U.S. I'm wondering when you're going to get back over here to the U.S. I'm going to ask you in a second. Um, you know, that that's happening. There's this cool thing called Bitcoin Day. They do six or seven of them a year. Uh, it's a one day thing here in America. Um, you've got uh, the Baltic Honey Badger, which I wanted to go to for years now. Uh, I've wanted to go every year since I was working with Tone. He was a lot of he was a speaker there. I, I, I'm familiar with it. I know it's very high quality. It's one of the best ones. And I saw that they were doing a little VC thing. Uh, so I just I, I was going regardless. Uh, and luckily they said, yeah, you can, you could talk on one of these VC panels. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, what else? There's more coming up. There's, um, the now Bitcoin magazine just announced, uh, the Amsterdam conference. I think that's in October. I'm really excited about that. I haven't been to Amsterdam in a long time either. I would love to, to go to that. Um, November El Salvador. Uh, we went last year for the first adopting Bitcoin. The second one is, is going to be this year in November. Great. Awesome conference. Uh, El Salvador was amazing. Super cheap. We went to the event with the president where he announced the Bitcoin bonds. It was so cool. Right. Um, so, yeah, you should everyone should get out and make that part of your travel. Like, you know, that's how we plan our travel. Like my wife, myself, like our friends, like there's a conference in Riga, Latvia. Let's freaking go. And that's we're going <laughs> to check out that. That's where it's not where do we want to go? It's where's the next event? What about yourself, think, though? You, you, you've you got a lot of events over there. What what are what are you looking forward to? 
so i went at my the first and only event that i went to was consensus i think way back in uh, 2017 and that was not a bitcoin event um adam had a the block stream had a booth right in the you know in the somewhere in the back end it wasn't even visible it was a kind of a shit show which it is you know of all uh, crypto stuff and non bitcoin stuff and i think since then i haven't been to an event but i definitely want to go to one of these pure bitcoin events i've been to um, uh, to prague uh, for uh, you know in uh, parallini puli uh, where they do these bitcoin stuff and i did a, a bitcoin course with jimmy song over there that's the only bitcoin event that i've been to but i need to get out i think uh, swan is doing one in uh november in the first week of november in atlanta if i'm not mistaken uh i might come to that but but we'll see so you have no other plans to come to the us or any other conferences right now not right now and the events that happen in this part of the world in asia and southeast asia and singapore where i'm based out of uh, there are no bitcoin only events and i'm not interested in any of the crypto and the altcoin events so there are quite a few happening actually this month uh i think there's one big event happening this month in july end and then i think one next month as well but yeah that's definitely not on my agenda yeah so your um your part of the world is a lot of altcoinery sort of token stuff but it's very big right i mean my i have some friends who you know dubai and even where you're at they have like so many crypto type of events you just you just don't go to any of them when you no. so you need to start you need to start your own bitcoin conference right out there that's what you need to do <laughs> yeah we need to do that you you did uh, unconfiscatable with tone ways i i need somebody with your background to do a a bitcoin only event in singapore i'd, I'd love to support that all right well let's think about it let i'm dead serious let's think about doing uh doing a bitcoin conference out there in singapore i have to ask you about jimmy song's uh conference i'm sorry uh his class uh i've been lucky i've known jimmy for a while he he's helped me out many times he's spoken uh at unconfiscatable he is a really good guy spent some good time with him and his family for that matter um his class kicks people's ass I mean, his class, even if you're talented, even if you know Python and you have experience, people in his class, they lose it. So I have to know, how was your experience being in his class? So I'm not a software engineer. I learned Python only to go to his class. So I just finished learning Python and then I finished reading Mastering Bitcoin by Andreas. And then I straight went to his class and it's a two-day bulldoze of Bitcoin tech information. And I remember the second day, this was about noon, I literally just walked out of the class to take a half an hour break. I said, "Jimmy, I'm just I need a break. I need some fresh air. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I'm going to faint." It was fantastic. I think my knowledge of my kind of understanding of how Bitcoin works at a fundamental tech level just of course shot up. Um but but it was painful. Uh fantastic, worth it, but painful. <laughs> Yeah, and uh and that's another one that I've always wanted to go to too was the Hackers Congress, uh that conference that you mentioned uh in Prague. I don't know if they're if they're doing that again this year. I know that there was a little bit of controversy with that uh conference during COVID. Some something happened. I don't know if it's coming back or not, but uh that's a very good one that I hope to go to one day. Yeah, that was fantastic. For me, it was to see speakers wearing uh, masks because they want to be anonymous. and there is a speaker at the event it was just a fantastic experience you know <laughs> so highly recommend that one yeah pre the, those are these are people that were wearing masks pre covid uh yeah, by choice <laughs> because they don't want to give away their identity yeah yeah i think I, that was fascinating for me i, I didn't know that happens in physical events uh, you know so that was fun yeah so, I also want to uh, since we're talking about events how was unconfiscatable are you going to do uh, so that was the event that you uh, for the audience that was the event that you did with tone ways in march uh, this year in vegas how did the event go are you doing another one the next year in 23 well that's a good question and i think it's kind of undetermined and if you do uh, end up doing your own bitcoin conference i think you're going to find out how hard and uh how how not as glamorous and fun 
uh, as you may think. Uh, this was our third year. I want to say it was maybe our best year. Um, it were definitely, definitely right. It was a great weekend. Uh, it was a great time. Uh, the poker tournament uh, was sold out. Um, we do this fun little Texas Hodlum uh, Bitcoin poker tournament. Uh, we did a two day conference this year. Uh, the carnivory dinner was fantastic. We had it at the mob museum in downtown Las Vegas. Everything was in downtown Las Vegas. And, um, you know, if it happens again, it's probably going to be moved to October ish of 2023 instead of the first part of the year around March. It was pretty close to Bitcoin 22 in Miami. So we had a lot of, uh, you know, international speakers. They're only coming in once. Right. So Adam Bax and uh, a lot of people who already were planned to come the next month for Miami, they can't come twice. They can't come a month before for unconfiscatable and then the next month. So we, we lost a little bit being a little close to them, but it was an amazing conference. Yeah, it was a, it was a good year. And I think that's what happened. Singapore was still in kind of lockdown. I mean, till April, literally. And I was just thinking, why haven't I been or made any plans to any of these Bitcoin only events post COVID? Singapore just opened up a couple of months back. And I think I just need to now get into that phase of uh, planning this. But anyway, thanks, Mike, for doing this. Before we wrap up again, just once more, how can people find you and uh, find Lighting Ventures? Sure. So um, we have a YouTube channel, too, where we do little founder interview videos. Uh, nobody watches them, but uh, your questions from the syndicate get in there and we ask them to uh, to founders when we're investing. Uh, LTNG.Ventures, LTNG.Ventures. Uh, I'm on Twitter as, as Mike Jarmuz, uh, J-A-R-M-U-Z, the Muzz man, as my friends call me. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how you can find us. Um, if you have any questions, you can send, fill out the contact us on the website or email me, Mike at LTNG.Ventures. Uh, if you have a founder that you want to refer, we have a, a program there where people can get involved and we share uh, a portion of uh, that deal with whoever refers us people. If you have questions about signing up for AngelList or getting cleared on the platform, if you have questions about early stage investing or Bitcoin investing or how to learn or what books to read or how to how to get started or why this is better than investing in Bitcoin itself, right? It's not meant to replace it. You are always buying Bitcoin, right? But um, this is a great way, or I think the best way to complement uh, your HODL position. And there are companies, there are stories, whether it's uh, the SoftBank with Alibaba or even from the seed round of Coinbase, you know, we're talking about making 4,000 times your money, you know, 10,000 times your money, 1,000 times your money. Um, that's really hard to do. Uh, so one of these Bitcoin startups that might do a 500 or a 2,000x from here, um, it's going to take a lot for Bitcoin to do a 2000x from here. Uh, and I believe that one of these companies that we're investing in something like Start9 Labs, um, if that catches on with a personal computing, sovereign computing revolution uh, that they're doing, that company is more likely to go from a $12 million valuation to uh, a $600 million valuation much, much faster than Bitcoin is set to go from 20,000 to, you know, 300,000 or whatever, whatever it is. Uh, I, I believe that that's going to happen fast, uh, much faster. So you can get the most ridiculous uh, returns on your money uh, for, you know, without playing around with the Wall Street bets crowd. These are not meme stocks. These are not tokens. These are not useless project scam lottery ticket ideas. These are real equity with real governing documents and real investments into real companies. So that's where I choose to have um, a lot of my illiquid life savings. Uh, it's that in Bitcoin. And um, I am wearing my seatbelt ready to go. So let's see what happens. I was looking for Bitcoin only funds and syndicates and I found, uh, you know, Bitcoin, I think Bitcoin Ventures by Corey, by Swan, and I found Lightning Ventures by you guys and very few of you guys out there and hopefully there will be many more and some very interesting projects already. I, ch I checked out some of the projects that you mentioned, some super interesting stuff that's happening uh, on the Bitcoin network, on Lightning, 
Uh, so excited to check them out. Mike, thanks for doing this and thanks for coming on Sunny Bitcoin. Yes, and thank you for being in our syndicate and a helpful, awesome person. And uh, thanks for having me on and hanging out and uh, hope that this is uh, just the start. And we're going to talk about that uh, conference in your neighborhood over there. We're going to see how that goes.